came across somebody as a victim of drowning, then the CPR cycle would be slightly different. What we need to do to start with is make sure the person's out of the water and it's safe to work on them. So you get them out of the water the best you can. Don't go jumping in the water and putting yourself in any danger. So maybe get some help, get them out of the water. Once they're out of the water, we do the breathing check exactly the same. So all the cycle up to that point is identical. When we find out they're not breathing, this is where it's slightly different. You would want to do five breaths. So to start with, we're just giving five breaths before we do the 30 and two uh, breaths, 30 compressions and two breaths. The reason we do these five breaths first is to try and get some air into the lungs because sometimes if this person's got a lung problem, a respiratory problem rather than a cardiac problem, it may be by helping them to breathe, they'll come round. The other key difference would be is if you're on your own, once you find out they're not breathing, then in normal CPR circumstances, you would leave the person and go and get for help. But a victim of drowning is different we would do one minute of CPR and then go for help. Again, the reason why we do this is because by doing that CPR, it may be we could bring that person round because this is a respiratory problem and not a cardiac problem. The whole time you're dealing with someone who's drowning, be very aware for your own safety. Uh, if you're next to a lake or a swimming pool, something like that, there's lots of other dangers you could be involved in. So to summarize, make sure the scene's safe, find out if they're breathing, if they're not breathing, uh, and you're on your own or, or get help if you can, uh, deliver five rescue breaths, then 30 compressions, two rescue breaths, 32, 32. If you're on your own, do that for one minute, go for help. If someone else has called for emergency services, continue until the emergency services arrive or you can hand over to a second rescuer. If the person does show signs of recovery and they do start breathing again, then you need to turn the person into the recovery position. So pop them onto their side in the recovery position. If they do start coming round, they're going to be coughing a lot. So it may well be that they cough, it might be you find that they're vomiting because they've taken some water in. So you just need to care for the person the best you can. Allow them enough room to actually cough and to, to breathe as best they can. If they're breathing but unconscious, leave them in the recovery position. But the whole time you're doing that, monitor them. Because it may well be that they start breathing, but then they stop later on. So you need to monitor it. Finally, anybody who's taken any water into their lungs can get what's called secondary drowning. Uh, and this may be that they come out of the water, they appear to be okay, but over time, uh, maybe a few hours, there can be caused problems inside the lungs. So anybody who's been a victim of drowning, whether they've been unconscious, not breathing, or even if they've remained conscious the whole time, you must get them checked out by the medical professionals.